Red 2 standing by, all for this, and in the green, it is a pleasure, at long last, to welcome you all back to Pokemon Heart Gold version. It's been a bit of a journey. I lost a lot when my hard drive crashed. That was, what, maybe 15, 16 episodes worth, a bit more worth of progress, basically. We'd made it into Kanto, we'd beaten the Elite Four, but unfortunately, we are kind of stuck back here. This was as far as I could get by recovering everything I'd done. So as we go through Blackthorn City, we can take a look at the team. I've been working hard getting everyone put through their paces with a bit of level grinding. We're a bit stronger than the last time I took on Claire. And so that this doesn't drag on too long, I'm changing around a few things. What I will be doing is basically running through these in about hour-long sessions. So we'll also share my new approach to things, that sort of more philosophical, more contemplative discussions. So basically I'll be keeping as much of a topic going as I can for the whole time. You know, sort of bringing up something that will allow you to put in your thoughts on the matter. Because of course we all want to find out all these interesting ideas, don't we? We want to be able to discuss things, to share our ideas and do this in a safe and respectful way. So, we can finally make it into the Blackthorn City Gym. Which immediately has absolutely no OHS compliance because as we can see, lava. As we can see, we're also told to keep our Pokémon in their Pokéballs. I will be leading off with Peony. Peony has Light Screen instead of Reflect, because Light Screen is going to be a lot more useful against Pokémon like those Claire uses, and it'll be pretty handy in the Elite Four too. Nelly also knows Earthquake, which is a big boost. Otherwise, don't think a lot has changed apart from the level. We still have our powerful Amazon squad and we have sort of a new format I'm going to be doing for discussion. I've talked about a lot of my favourite uh, grass type Pokemon along the way. Well, a lot of my favourite Pokemon in general. So, in order to move through here we have to rotate these platforms. That's how we get through, but we'll be talking about Grass-type Pokémon today, appropriately enough for the Dragon-type gym. So, most of our opponents will actually wind up being Horsey and Seedra, as well as Dratini and Dragonee. But basically, what I'm going to be doing is a sort of ranking thing for a lot of different uh, Pokémon types. Now, this isn't any sort of ultimate objective viewpoint that what I say is the best thing in the world and blah blah blah. It's just sort of how I think of things. So I've sort of gone on S to D tier from highest to lowest. D tier is basically the ones that I think have serious problems or I just don't use them very much. So ones that I haven't really thought of using will probably be in there, and I apologise if your favourite is down there. It doesn't mean that I think your favourite is absolutely crap, it just means that it's not for me. C tier is sort of interesting but has a few problems, or I just don't quite regard it as much, but it's better than their D tier. B tier is reasonably solid, use them now and then, or they're interesting for some measure. A tier is the pretty solid ones, the big personal favourite, some of the big personal favourites, and S tier, obviously my absolute personal favourites. So you will see some odd choices here and there. Anyway, let's get going. We, might, we will start off with the D tier ones and then wind up moving onwards and upwards. I've also gone for only final forms. That makes things a little bit easier. 
So kicking off the D tier is poor old Sun Flora, which is hardly ever seen, doesn't have great stats, and also has a pretty crummy move pool. I like its design, but it's pretty much all grass moves. Even Chlorophyll doesn't help poor old Sun Flora that much. Kinda sad, I think it really could do with a bit of improvement. Like, you could make a regional variant of it, buff its stats and make it a grass fire type or something like that. That'd be really cool, an actual sunflower that plays on that sun aspect by being a grass fire type. So we've also got Cherim, which is kind of a gimmick, mostly built to work with sun teams, but you're gonna find a lot of better ones. Never really used that one. Simisage, which... Well, it's useful for helping you get past the first gym in the... Uh, what's its thing? Black and white, sorry. If you act, if you picked Tepic. Otherwise, it's really not that different to pretty much any other grass type out there. And while it does have decent stats, there are better ones. Go Goat, which I haven't regarded very much. I've sort of, I kind of forget a lot of Kalos Pokemon are there. I'm gonna be honest with you, which is a little sad. There are some good ones, but I just don't really remember Kalos's Pokemon being there. They just sort of exist, and I'll occasionally go, Oh yeah, that's right, that one exists too. Kind of unfortunate. Now, Gogo does have a pretty cool design and, and a nice idea. It's just that you don't get to use it. You don't get to use that particular facet of its design, which is really, really sad. Then you've got Tangrowth, which I kind of feel it's a bit unfair putting it in the D tier, because it probably could be C pretty easily. I've never used it. It's a solid enough Pokemon. It's just that I didn't really get much opportunity to use it. Tangela was unremarkable. It was mostly noteworthy for being the only pure grass type in Generation 1. So, that's kind of there. Then... Then after that one, we have Elder Goss. Another that I just sort of feel is a bit... It's a bit there, in a sense. Like, it's... It's probably one of those Pokemon that is not bad, it's just not quite remarkable for me. It's not quite able to set itself apart from a few other Pokemon. And if I'm going to be honest, that sort of big plant spore floating through the sky thing was done better with a different Pokemon for my money. Bell Awesome unfortunately falls down in D tier, even though it's a good Pokemon. I just don't get much of an opportunity to use it, and I kind of like Vileplume's aesthetic a little bit more. It's a good Pokemon, but it doesn't. I suppose it doesn't do too much to differentiate itself from Vileplume. Mostly just the way the move pool works. Then we've got Leafeon, which, because of the fact I didn't really go for the Eeveelutions as much, it just feels kind of forgettable to me. You have to level up your Eevee in a specific area, and you're getting a decent physical hitter, but aside from that, it's... Probably, it's decent enough, I think. It just doesn't stand out compared to some of the others for me. Shaman I kind of tend to forget about as well. Skyform is obviously, like, really, really, really good for competitive battling. It's just that overall, if you're not much of a competitive battler, like I'm not, it's not going to be quite as remarkable because it was kind of tough for us to get Shaman in events. Australia sort of missed out on a lot, and I have absolutely no interest in Shaman as a result. I don't really care about its uh, grass, about its uh, sky form, because, well, I don't want to annoy people. I don't have very many friends as is, and I want to keep them, so I wouldn't be using something as ridiculous as that. So that's pretty much that. Then we've got Superior, which would jump up 
to about C rank with Contrary, but otherwise it's firmly in D rank because its attacking stats are terrible, its move pool is horrifically limited on top of that. And while it's trying to be a wall, the grass type does have 5 weaknesses, so it's really not worth it. It's not entirely horrible because of Contrary, but Contrary is really its only thing. That's kind of unfortunate. So really, Superior didn't do that much for me. Shinotic is just sort of there as well. It's like another mushroom Pokemon, but I think there are better mushroom Pokemon out there. Then you've got Wormadam, which because I hate using the Honey Tree mechanic, I kind of forget Wormadam exists. So its uh, Plant Cloak form isn't going to do much for me because it's got two double weaknesses as well. Levani is sort of in the same uh, same boat. Like, it's a decent enough Pokemon, I've just never bothered using it, which is probably why Levani is down there in... Uh, down there in D tier. Mostly because it takes a lot for me to go out of my way and use Pokemon with happiness evolutions. Finishing this up is Sourcebuck, which has a really nice gimmick in the form of its season changing. The fact that it will look different depending on the season, the aesthetic of that is lost in later games, but I've never really bothered using it. That's probably the reason why it's down there. It's a decent Pokemon, I've never bothered using it. I can't pass any judgement on Zarud, because I didn't... Either I didn't see the event or didn't care about the event. And as for Calyrex, I stuck Calyrex down in D tier because it's sort of, it's okay, but you're not going to use regular Calyrex. You are absolutely not using regular Calyrex, are you? It's just going to wind up being Spectria or, Spectria or Glastria all the way. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Calyrex is just in a kind of unfortunate boat. That it's a decent enough Pokemon, and it's, but it mainly exists to facilitate the use of a different Pokemon. It's kind of unfortunate. Bit of a disadvantage for that one. So, there we are. That's pretty much the Pokemon that I don't really like that much or that I've never used. A little sad perhaps. I think I'm gonna lead off with Peony for this battle because she has Light Screen. Basically, it's light screen, then tag out. Or I'll put her... Actually, no, I know when to put her in. The Pokemon I should be using is Nelly. Let's go! So, you know, Claire, she is Claire. She is not Groot, however. And she's arrogant! Claire considers herself the world's best Dragon Master, and, as she states, she can hold her own against the Pokemon League's Elite Four. I don't like voicing her because, well, I really hate Claire's personality. She comes across as really arrogant, quite the jerk, and on top of that, I really don't like Sundere characters either, which she eventually winds up developing into. Something about them just irritates me. It's one of the major reasons why I don't like Midna from Twilight Princess, because she starts off as that Sundere type. I just can't stand, like... I'm not very good at getting my own feelings out. But that's the thing. If I actually start to like you as a person, I'm going to tell you that I like you as a person. I've at least got that much social skills. If I have to pretend that I don't like you, hiding everything, be everything I feel behind a jerk-ass facade, I'm not a good person. At least that's my attitude for it. 
Anyway, Claire probably winds up getting a bit of a pass with a lot of fans because for whatever re A, for whatever reason they like Sundere, and B, they think she's kind of hot. Oh yeah, that's right. Claire has Gyarados first. She had three Dragonair and Kingdra in gold version. In this one, obviously, there's a slight difference. So we're going to bring out Angela. And we're going to move on to the C tier, which has some fairly solid Pokemon. I didn't really put these in any specific order when I was writing them. Breloom is first up. It's a pretty decent Pokemon. I'd love to use it a bit more. Stats aren't great, but on the other hand, it is really fun to use. And it can actually get some pretty good moves if you hold off on evolving Shroomish. Can use Spore and Focus Punch really well. Pretty decent Pokemon. Carnivine is next. Now, Carnivine could easily drop down to the D tier for some people. But I just, because it's so out of the way, I find it interesting. I've actually used one and it was a lot of fun using it. It wasn't super outstanding, but it did its job and that little bit of sentimentality keeps it up in C tier. Then we've got Lilligant, which is mostly kept down in C tier because, while well, it's a neat Pokemon with some pretty good moves along the way, its move pool is kind of crap. Like, it can get Quiver Dance, which is brilliant. That's kind of it. It gets some really good grass moves, but that's kind of it. It doesn't get very much. Great special attacker, but there's not a lot else going for it. Next up is Maractus, which I am actually using as I play through Black version. Maractus is a pretty decent Pokemon along the way. It can have some pretty useful abilities. It just kind of has a disadvantage that it's not... Its move pool is horrible, and it's got kind of crappy defenses, along with not very good speed. And I don't know why Game Freak insists on doing that. It just bugs me so much that they'll make a Pokemon with s that has so much potential, but its flaws are so blatantly obvious as well. Like, the flaws can often be just flat out crippling. Might see if we can get the paralysis with, um, with secret power if it hits. Well, that hit. Uh, best keep going with secret power. Because Kingdra's going to spam smoke screen. Which means as soon as the light screen wears off, we switch out to Hedwig. That'll be the battle strategy. Next up was Chestnord, which I'm willing to give a bit of a pass. I just like it. I like its design. It's kind of interesting. It does the grass fighting thing with a bit more power than uh, Breloom. And it's not bad. It just... I know it looks a bit weird, but it can be a particularly useful Pokemon along the way. It's not too shabby, all things considered. Then I'm probably putting Sarina into uh, C tier because it's a pretty good Pokemon with some good stats. It's just not one I'm prepared to go out of my way to use. I've never really bothered. I, I kind of like it, but it's not really outstanding for me. Which you'll note is probably a bit of a theme with a lot of these things. Rillaboom is sort of the same. Another Pokemon with, like, good pretty good design along the way. Some uh, pretty interesting moves. Good capabilities, but it's just... There's just something about it that doesn't quite click for me because I haven't really got to know all of the starters for Galar as well as I'd like. Probably a good opportunity to roost now. Ah, oh, that doesn't sound right. That just does not sound right, that effect from Hyper Beam. I miss the old effect. Now, if we could get a crit... Oh, one HP, I'll bet you. And this is the part that sucks.
Okay, so we will try and switch back to Peony, absorb an attack. I'll probably have to heal too. Kingdra is probably quite a bit faster. Probably best if I use my own in the potion along the way. Or Moo Moo Milk, but... So getting back onto the next lot. Tropius is a Pokemon I don't really regard I don't really get to regard. You're not going to run into Tropius particularly frequently. You, if you want a grass type, you've probably got a grass type and you've gone with Sceptile. Which is fair enough, all things considered. So it's not too shabby because it's excellent for HM moves. It's just not quite what anyone... It's not quite the best option because of how late it arrives. But it's still a pretty sweet Pokemon, all things considered. Amoongus makes C tier because memes, kind of. You can make as many sus jokes as you like, basically. So that's kind of why Amoongus is there. Virizion is next because while it's a legendary Pokemon and it deserves a bit of respect, it doesn't do a lot for me. It's I tend to forget about a lot of legendary Pokemon because they kind of weren't that special in some ways after perhaps Generation 3. Probably because of how many they came up with. There we go. So we're slightly stronger and that was a fair bit easier. So now we can switch over to Nelly and take care of the rest. So Decidui also comes in as C tier because I'd probably say that if it was just Rowlet, Rowlet would be at least a solid B. Decidui is not bad, but it's it's got an interesting typing that I do like, but it's, for personal reasons, it's not that great. It's it's a solid enough Pokemon. It'll be a dependable starter, but there are others of its type that I like a lot better. Tapu Bulu, sort of, and, Tapu Bulu and Kartana sort of fit in there because, again, they wind up fitting into the problem of these are legendary Pokemon that... I uh, don't really regard that much. And basically, we see that Claire winds up chucking a hissy fit when she's beaten. She refuses to admit that she lost. She's basically making us jump through a hell of a lot more hoops just so she can avoid saying that... that she didn't lose. She's calling us lazy when she isn't prepared to do the extra work to admit that she's lost and grow as a person. I really can't stand her. There was kind of an interesting uh, interesting little joke that came up with uh, all that in uh, in the original versions when she gave out the uh, gave out the TM for Dragon Breath. I believe that the word Ibuki, player's Japanese name can also be read as breath or something like that. So that's why the joke about to the TM having nothing to do with her breath popped up. It was kind of lost in translation. Of course, it does kind of work in the English version when you consider that she is a bit of a dragon anyway. But she gives us the TM for Dragon Pulse this time around. But yeah, pretty much Claire winds up annoying me a lot. She's probably worse in the Crystal and the remakes than she is in this version, because I think Crystal had this Dragon Master test as well. But anyway, let's get going into the... Oh, wait, hang on. We're going to need a Pokemon with Whirlpool to go into the Dragon's Den. We do actually have to use Whirlpool. I'll give Peony a break because she fought very hard. And we'll find a suitable Pokemon. We can... So, as I said, basically, Tapu, Bulu, and Kartana sort of come into that. There are probably way too many legendary Pokemon, and subsequently they get lost in the shuffle thing. Which, I suppose, is... 
understandable. Alright, I think you can uh, use Whirlpool, so saddle up, Tentacruel. We're probably not going to be able to catch Dratini without the Super Rod. But if we grind for coins, we would be able to get one anyway. Which is kind of what I did thanks to the magic of save states to give uh, Angela her moveset. And of course give Hesty a flamethrower early. Oh god that sucked. So much cheesing. Anyway, after Kartana and uh, Tapu Bulu just sort of being there as far as legendaries go, they are kind of legendaries for the sake of being legendary. We have Flapple and Appleton. At least we get some beautiful artwork of the Dragon's Den. I talked over the top of that, so... Ah! I wasn't quite paying attention. Yep, you do get to see Dragonair in there at night. Does have some pretty cool music, but... We're also going to be using a Repel, because otherwise we won't really get anywhere. Now, I do wish you got to do more in the Dragon's Den, like, as much as Claire is a pain in the rear. This is a really cool area, and I do wish there was more to do in the post-game. But, of course, she's wound up seeking her goons on us. So, yeah, after Flapple and Appleton both tie because they're like... They're kind of awkward to use and a pain in the ass to find. They're pretty interesting. They've got some really neat designs. They'd probably have worked better aesthetically in an American-based region because... Well, Appleton would because, you know, the saying is... As, yeah, as American as apple pie. That is kind of a... Th that is a thing. I don't know if apple pie really is American, but... Anyway, Flapple and Appleton do have some pretty neat ideas behind them, but... Like, overall, I just... Well, they don't quite stand out a lot to me. Probably going to have to withdraw my money and to stop having Mum save our money once we get into Kanto, because we just get an abundance of berries and it's such a pain. We can find a few items along the way, too. Calcium? The team's been doing a bit of specialist training, so we're probably a bit ahead of using that. Now, if we surf around this area, we might be able to find a few things here and there. So, the only other ones that aren't in the, that are in C tier are Mo Rotom. Which is alright, it's a really interesting type combination. But we just sort of... We just sort of have the disadvantage that I like others a bit better. So we can pop up here if we need to. Dragon Shrine. A shrine revering the dragon Pokemon said to have lived in Dragon's Den. So this little area will actually wind up being important to us a bit later on. Okay, a lot later on, but it's still worth knowing that that is there. Nothing around here. We can move on. We should move on. We should also put another repel so we can move on and aren't spending most of our hour getting stuck. So with C done, we move on to B. And there are some pretty solid ones up in B as well. Is there a hidden item up there? Yes, there is. Always good to know. Grab that just in case. My team did okay. Yours may not do as well. But that's okay if it doesn't. Because as long as you're having fun with your Pokemon experience, that's what really counts. Uh, this way. And let's get into another battle as they move on to the B tier. Sceptile... It's... It probably could jump up to A, but it's at the very least a solid B tier. It's probably let down a bit by the fact that most of its move pool seems to be physical when it's kind of clearly a special attacker. 
but overall it's a very solid Pokemon that could- it's a high B tier at the very least. That- that would be my consideration. It's a good Pokemon, it's always been a dependable ally when I've gone through the Hoenn games, and I have a lot of good things to say about it. It's got a pretty cool Mega Evolution as well, so it gets a few points for that. It's, ju it's just an all-round dependable, maybe not necessarily outstanding by virtue of the fact it's a pure grass type and those do run into problems, but it's solid nonetheless and I definitely like it a lot. Shiftry is kind of the same, it was one of the first dark types I really used and I enjoyed using it. It was basically how I wound up finding out what a good move Extra Sensory was. I mean, at the time, back in Generation 3, 80 power... 30 PP, chance to make the target flinch. Like, you'd trade that off from Psychic. Speaking of extra sensory, can I? God, am I? Am I? I'm not actually Psychic, but jeez Louise. Yeah, like extra sensory is such a good move. Like, and Bronzong and Bronzong actually get it fairly early on in their Generation 4 movesets. Like, why would you not? I cannot speak highly enough of it. It really is worth it. It's an incredibly good move. So that helped me wind up liking Shiftry. It's a, it's a solid enough Pokemon. It's a little fragile and not super fast. Again, that problem. But... It is nonetheless very dependable and can hit well from either side as far as attacking goes. So you've got a lot of good options with it. It's definitely worth your time. Torterra's next, probably my favourite of the Sinnoh starters, a good solid dependable Pokemon that gets Earthquake right on evolving in Diamond and Pearl. So you are going to hit so much pretty hard and the fact that it gets that ground typing is just amazing. Ground is so versatile, and I mean, look, like, look at this. I think it's about a 20% chance of making the target flinch. That is phenomenal. That is a really good move. It's so worth it. It's so worth it. Stick with it if you get the opportunity. Because even though it got reduced to, like, 20... Uh, 20 pp later on that's still a ridiculously good trade-off Psybeam has 20 pp and you've got a 10 percent chance to confuse the target and confusion only works half the time at best of course if you're using it on the ai you are not going to have anywhere near that much luck in theory but yeah so we've talked about extra sensory for a bit Torterra is just a great Pokemon that can overcome some of those weaknesses of the Grass type with the power of the uh, the power of the Ground type. It is actually the slowest of all the starters, but it's pretty solid on the physical side of things. It's got a crippling weakness to Ice moves, which means that if you're using Empoleon, you can rip through it, which is a little unfortunate. But it's just. It's still just a really good Pokemon along the way. A lot of good things to say about it. Then we have Lurantis, which actually isn't as quite as good stats-wise as Sarina. Sarina has, I think, a bit more speed. And I think it might be slight Lurantis might be slightly better at special attack, but I just like Lurantis's design overall. It does have some pretty good moves along the way. It can get contrary. It just seemed to look really neat. There was something about the design that made me want to use it. I stuck with it and it turned out to be pretty handy. So yeah, there was definitely something about that that just it just had that bit of extra character along the way. Which I really enjoyed and so I just stuck with it. Simple as that. It's entirely down to personal preference there. Vileplume also pops up to B tier. Probably on personal preference again over Bell Awesome. It's really nice that it uh, resembles the Rafflesia. It's probably got a bit more thematic connection to the evolution line. Oh yes, that's right. Wait, no. I don't know. There's just something about Vileplume that I like. 
I like. It's probably lower B tier in all fairness. But it's still a pretty good member of B tier. It's good to have it's good to have around. I really should try using it. Like a lot of uh, grass poison type Pokemon, it's had better options come along as the generations have developed. It's fairly bulky, pretty tanky, it can uh, do the job in a pinch. I'd say it's a pretty good Pokemon all round, really. Maybe not fantastic on the offense, but you'll be able to distribute some good status conditions. Jumpluff is next. Jumpluff is a pretty good Pokemon as far as I'm concerned. It's not a great attacker, but it is wonderful for setting up status conditions and all those little supporting things. Like, I've used Jumpluff. I have a bit of more of a sentimental connection to Jumpluff. I've enjoyed using Jumpluff, and uh, as a result, Eldegoss falls behind. Eldegoss is sort of stuck down in... Uh, stuck down in uh, D tier, because if I want... Like, so if I want that Cotton Puff Pokemon, I'm using Jumpluff. I'm just going to stick with Jumpluff, even if it doesn't necessarily have the greatest move pool along the way. Like I said, very good support, so give it a try sometime. Relatively easy to find, it's fully evolved at level 27, and there are probably much better grass moves along the way that you'll be able to use with it. So really, give it a go. Then after that, we've got Parasect. You might be thinking, why on earth is Parasect, which is a bug grass type with not very good stats, jumping up to a solid B tier? Parasect gets its respect because it's a phenomenal Pokemon for catching other Pokemon. You level this thing up to a pretty good, uh, to pretty good level, it's going to be slow, it's not fantastic. But it's got Spore and False Swipe. Spore is the only 100% accurate sleep inducing move. And False Swipe obviously can't knock out a target, but will leave them with 1 HP. It's brilliant. It's surprisingly useful in that sense. It's very good with its status conditions. It can have some decent moves. I do wish it was a bit better, but it's an overall pretty solid Pokemon. Now, the we speak to the Elder of the Dra... The Elder of the Dragon Clan. Hmm, good to see you here. No need to explain why you came. Claire sent you here, didn't she? That girl is a handful. I'm sorry, but I must test you. Not to worry. You are you are to answer only a few questions. Ready? What a Pokemon to you? Well, I think this journey has made it very clear that they're my friends. Oh. I understand. What helps you to win battles? Strategy, generally. I admit you can brute force your way through the main game most of the time, but I do like to have a bit of strategy here and there. I understand. What kind of trainer do you wish to battle? I'll take on anyone, as long as we can have fun with our love for Pokemon. I understand. What is most important for raising Pokemon? Love? And peace. Strong Pokemon, weak Pokemon, which is more important? Look, my team is not exactly a powerhouse in terms of stats. They're all important. I may, I went through this game with a furret. I don't care as long as I like them, and I like pretty much all of them, in some way or another. I'm going to use them, even if I don't use them a lot. Even the Pokemon in D tier, let's essentially consider that friends I haven't met yet. I see. You care deeply for Pokemon. Very commendable. That conviction is what is important. Tom, don't lose that belief. It will see you through at the Pokemon League. And guess who rocks up? And we get to deliver a metaphorical slap in the face as Claire realises... That even she hasn't passed. Claire. This child is impeccable in skill and spirit. Admit defeat and confer the rising badge. Or must I inform Lance of this?
and we get our little moment to rub the fact we've got the rising badge in Claire's face. At least Whitney just started crying when she lost. I mean, I can probably imagine that Whitney might be a bit upset because she's thinking, hey, what's going on here? My mill tank should be thrashing everyone. Once you actually become a more experienced trainer, Whitney and Claire can be handled pretty easily. But when you're just beginning, they are serious stumbling blocks. By the way, have you heard of Lugia? It is a Pokemon said to have lived around Whirl Islands once. Ugh, oh, never mind. Just mad words of the old. Of course, we will wind up going to find Lugia eventually. So the last one in B tier is Trevenant, which I don't use as much. Of the two Ghost Grass Pokemon introduced in Generation 6, I do prefer Gurgeist a bit more. But I do like Trevenant. It has a pretty cool design. It does admittedly have stats that are good, but a bit too well distributed. But there is a lot of fun in being able to beat up your opponent with a tree. That has its own little novelty. And Claire apologizes, and we get Dragon Pulse. We will have to head home pretty soon. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get the opportunity to show off the trainers on Route 45 and 46. We probably have a bit of extra catching to do as far as Pokemon go as well. Do I have Wobbuffet registered in my Pokedex? And Professor Elm has returned. I think I gave him the same voice as I did Professor Mirror. Hello, Tom. How's it going? I've gotten hold of something neat. Swing by my lab and pick it up. See you later. Yeah, Mirror's... I think Mirror... Yeah, that, that's sort of my general Professor voice. Professor Oaks is sort of... Well, the idea is it's in, intended to challenge that classic, You were close! But you can't, as fun as new Pokemon Snap is, admittedly, there's always going to be a certain boon in the mimetic factor of the original. The simplicity of the original to a degree is kind of fun because there's a lot to do in new Pokemon Snap. But some of the stuff, oh, getting the requests, ugh. Anyway, we're moving on to A tier. And probably high A tier bordering on S tier is Cacturn. Despite the fact that it's another situation of this Pokemon has really crap defenses and crap speed for some reason. Like, I can understand a cactus being slow. But defense, poor defenses? Nah, -uh. these things are hardy as anything. And incredibly adaptable. Especially if it's Prickly Pea. You just cannot get rid of that stuff very easily. I'm adamant it should just be napalmed. Horrible, horrible stuff. Can Tentacruel learn Waterfall? Need to see. Asking for late game. So we'll boot this up and check it out. Cacturn has always been a favourite from the Hoenn games right from the start. It was a lot of fun to use. Cacturn just, it has some pretty good moves available to it. It can hit you hard from the physical or special side. And while it does have those major disadvantages, you can play some interesting games with it and throw out Focus Punch and Sucker Punch. There are probably a lot of other tricks you can do with it as well. The type might be a bit shoddy sometimes, but overall it just comes across as a really dependable Pokemon that I've absolutely loved using in spite of its flaws, so it's probably def probably a case of this pretty much could be S tier. I think we'll put it as high A borderline S tier. Good, I do have Wobbuffet. Don't need to worry too much about that. We did get Lapras, which is good. Ah, Shell Armor. The problem with that, how do you know it's working? So we'll probably just make our way down Route uh, 45 and 46 with a casual, a casual, peaceful stroll. We'll reflect on a few more things. So, let's go this way, see if we can bat. 
Battle of Wild Pokemon. So Victory Bell is also in A tier entirely because of the fact I have a shiny Victory Bell. It's got and Victory Bell has a little bit more offensive power, but is a little bit more fragile compared to Vileplume. Victory Bell can hit you hard from either attacking side. Vileplume's mostly a special attacker. It's a, it's a pretty good Pokemon in terms of design. It didn't have a great move pool in Generation 1, apart from being able to abuse Rap. But overall, a pretty solid Pokemon as far as I'm concerned. I like its design, I like its shiny form, and it's that big sentimental attachment that makes it a worthwhile Pokemon for me. We'll continue on down the road. After we stop. Roserade is next. I like Ros Roselia, and I really like Roserade. It has the highest special attack, I think, of any... I think it was the highest special attack of any grass type, or maybe it was poison type, not sure. But either... for some time. But either way, Roserade... It's, it's a very good Pokémon that hits hard, is pretty fast, and it's just got a really neat design as well. Almost feels like it's borrowing a little bit from Tuxedo Mask in terms of some of its aesthetics, but it's still nonetheless a solid Pokémon. If you, well, it is hard to get because you need the shiny stone if you want something that's going to hit pretty hard. It's going to be a dependable Pokemon. Did I get Tyrogue? I think I've got to actually head off and get Tyrogue. I'll have to look when we get back down. So yeah, need to check that out. Roserade's a good... Wins a cot. As far as the cotton puffs go, while I do have a good sentimental attachment to Jumpluff, Whimsicott wins out for the fact that it's incredibly useful. It's got a bit more variety in its move pool. It's a grass fairy type now, which helps it. And its prankster can make it a really good tank by virtue of having cotton guard. Play your cards right with Whimsicott and you can mess with people's heads. It can do so much. With uh, a good variety of moves at its disposal, Whimsicott will be able to frustrate people to no end and get a big advantage by setting up a lot of its dependable moves. Really, really worth a go, in all honesty. I used one on one of my uh, black version runs, which I named after the sax... I think it was a saxophonist anyway, John Coltrane. A very, very nice Pokemon to have. Gurgeist is on the list. I like Ghost-type Pokemon, and Gurgeist is just a lot of fun. The fact that there's the little variety in the sizes of Gurgeist and it affects how they battle, that's a really nice touch that I don't think is used anywhere near as much as it should be. For example, the larger they get, the slower they get, but the better their attack and I think the better their HP as well. Still got the same solid defense either way. Thank you, we kind of knew about that. I could have just walked up there. Hi Tom, you never cease to amaze me. Thanks to you, my research is going great. Take this as a token of my appreciation. There's our Master Ball. The Master Ball is the best. It's the ultimate Pokeball. It'll catch any Pokemon without fail. It's given only to noted Pokemon researchers. I think you can make much better use of it than I can, Tom. By the way, we just had a group of beautiful kimono girls looking for you. Well, we do have to go out. We do go out of our way to help people. It's always worthwhile doing that. The Kimono Girls are waiting for you at the Ecritique Dance Theatre. So probably wrapping up with the battles against them will be worth a punt. Their levels are a little bit lower than I initially thought. But we'll fly out there and get ready to go. We can't change... It's a bit of a marathon battle. But we should be alright. So yeah, Gurgeist has that really fun aspect 
to it, that interesting change of, uh, the way everything changes with it. Oh no, we didn't get Tyrogue. We'll have to go and get Tyrogue and find the Karate King in the next one because we don't have, we don't have wa Waterfall. So, as a matter of fact, I'll probably set up to go and uh, track that down. Probably again give... Uh, well, I'll give Hedwig a bit of a break because we're not going to need to fly. We will have to go back into Mount Mortar with... With a uh, rock climb. I nearly said rock slide. But we can potter around and do a few things with the uh, waterfall. Not a lot, but... As soon as I decide to fly somewhere, you dumbass! You know what? Let's just make our way into Mount Mortar and we'll wrap things up there. We are approaching the hour mark. I've still got to finish waffling on because I've made it to Delmise, which could go in S tier as well. Delmise looks really cool. I love its pirate, sort of piratey aesthetic. The fact that it's sort of that, it's the ship's anchor surrounded by cursed seaweed. I'd better go and get some repels. The fact that it can use steel type moves pretty well and that Anchor Shot has such a beautiful animation. It really is something special. At least as far as I'm concerned. It's so hard to find. It's stupidly hard to find. But it's definitely worth it. At least I think it's worth it anyway. It can hit reasonably well from either side and actually has great defences. It's about as slow as you'd expect an anchor to be. But... It's definitely worth having. Jeez Louise, how much stuff did we get? I cleaned this out before we started. Alright. So, moving on to the ones that are definitive S tier for me, keeping in mind that Cacturn and Delmise pretty much could be in there. As a matter of fact, you may as well consider them there. This many. So, we've got Venusaur. The... Probably the original... Grass type most people used and still pretty good to this day. A lot of sentimental attachment, lot of good mileage out of this one. There's just not much more you can say. It's just solid, it's dependable, it's had so many good tricks up its sleeve over the years. It's an all-round good Pokemon. It does admittedly suffer from the flaws of being a grass poison type, but I'm prepared to overlook those. It's great. There's just not much more that can be said about it. Ferrothorn, another of my favourite Pokemon. A remarkably dependable defender with very few weaknesses. One of them is admittedly four times, so that kind of balances. It can hit pretty hard once you build it up and it'll shrug off most attacks as well. You've got a really solid Pokemon with an interesting design. The good ability to deal some passive damage if somebody makes contact with it. And overall, while it's not always great on the offense, it's nonetheless a pretty good physical hitter. It'll defend really well. Just don't expect it to do anything very quickly and you'll be fine. It is just overall an amazingly solid Pokemon that I cannot praise enough and it was a mainstay on my original black version team. Then there's Ludicolo. I mean, Mirror B's ace Pokemon. Do you need to say anything more? If we do need to say anything more, I think we might need to go downstairs and look for a few things before we surf. Grass Water is a pretty good type combination. It has some pretty good defensive options available to it. Did we clean this area out? I'll have to check. Say, so, yeah, it can be a reasonable defender. It's got some good attacking options. Some pretty good 
just pretty good tactics all round. It's a nice, solid, and dependable Pokemon. That while it does evolve via Water Stone, it's kind of hard to go wrong. If you get the opportunity to use this one, it's well worth a go. I think I did actually clean this little area out. Check one more spot. Can't easily go through there. And yeah, I'd be willing to say that yes, we did. We did clean this little bit out. I just had to refresh myself. So yeah, after that, the last one that I have in the S tier is one of my favourite fossil Pokemon. Cradilly. Rock has five weaknesses. Grass also has five weaknesses. The two of them together have four weaknesses. It's strange, I know, but they go together so well because they cover each other surprisingly well on top of that. Like, you can pair a grass type with a rock ground type. Grass's five weaknesses, fire, ice, bug, flying, and poison. Rock takes care of four of those. Ground takes care of poison. But rock also resists poison, yeah, resists poison crucially enough. So a good rock type is a great f friend for a grass type and putting them together just makes for a devastating dynamic. Cradilly doesn't hit very hard, but you can set up Cradilly to be such an irritating tank. We have a trainer to battle. Who has mistaken us for his friend? And there we are, Cedra. We'll take that down with Angela, and it's probably a good spot to wrap up the episode. So yeah, Armaldo is pretty cool and all that. And it's a very good bit of attention to detail that his Pokemon has Waterfall. Because you're not getting up here without Waterfall. That is a nice touch. That's actually good detail. So, Cradilly, it can be an absolute fortress against special attacks if you use it in a sand team. You'll shrug off special attacks, be able to irritate people by just walling them. And speaking of irritating, I really have to go home once I've recovered... Once I've recovered Hedwig and deactivate that option. So yeah, there we go for how I rank Grass-type Pokémon. That's just my view on the whole thing. I'd definitely be interested to find out your favourites, what you consider the best ranked, and which ones you're not as fond of. Remember, all those Pokémon down in lower tiers could well be friends that you just haven't met yet. I mean, Maractus is slowly growing on me, for one thing, and I'm sure some of those others would be particularly handy to use along the way. Why not give it a try? You could be very pleasantly surprised. And if you still don't like it, well hey, at least you gave it a shot. Anyway, next time, I'm going to be looking at the poison type. So quite a few of those are going to be on here. But you're also going to note that quite a lot of Pokemon may shift around when compared to other contemporaries. Some Pokemon which stand out compared to, say, grass types might not stand out as well compared to water types. Some of them might just be solid overall. So, we've got quite a bit done for this particular episode. Thank you very much for joining me. We've hopefully had a very interesting discussion, and I will see you in the next one as we brave the depths of Mount Mortar and get ready to battle the Kimono Girls. Until next time, this is Red 2, returning to base.